Hi guys, Veggie Gamer back and episode 7 of Hell of a Boss Season 1 is in the books, Veggie Knights. What an absolute treat of an episode. From what I gather, it is most people's... It's it's up there in their favourite episodes, guys. I have seen a couple of car uh, people commenting saying... It wasn't really for them that, that they felt that not much happened. But I that's what I really appreciated about it. The fact that there was no overarching mission or any big distraction. It was all about people and the characters. And we learned a lot about these characters, guys. And not, not the least Blitz, which is kind of the focus of this video that we'll be going into. The overarching uh, moral of this episode is the difference between love and lust. And I think that, that is probably key to what actually happened right at the end of the episode, guys. So we're going to be discussing that in a moment. The episode revolves around Millie and Moxie's one-year wedding anniversary and them going off to a fancy restaurant for a good time and Blitz feeling the need to pursue them, which is actually a very interesting thing that this really goes into. I feel like now we actually know why Blitz is actually following and always interrupting and always, you know, s spying on Millie and Moxie. Based on this episode, he's unable to get into the club because he's on his own and so he invites Stolas, reluctantly invites Stolas along to join him so he can get into the club. But once there, uh, they are both berated by Fizzarali, Big Ozzy and even Veroska Mayday who is there. And yeah, they're kind of humiliated and call their what was a makeshift date, or so Blitz could keep, keep an eye on Millie and Moxie, to an end. What follows is, in my opinion, possibly the best bit of writing that is, um, has is graced Hell of a Boss Season 1 so far, guys. Particularly the scene between Blitz and Stolas, uh, chatting outside Stolas' house. Uh, some people pointed out, which I completely went over my head, is that Stolas actually refers to Blitz as Blitz for the first time, guys. No Blitzy or anything like that. Um... And it's clear that Stolas wants to have this relationship that Millie and Moxie have. That they, clear, that they both clearly are actually very, very jealous of Millie and Moxie. Um, but Blitz, and we know this from previous episodes, cannot let people in. And so is incredibly harsh to Stolas, saying that all he wants is for Blitz to, well, you know what he says. And the evening is left like that. It's heartbreaking, guys, especially as, if you look at the episode, Blitz was really taking advantage of Stolas. The only reason why he invited Stolas out to the club was so he could keep an eye on Millie and Moxie. And it's so heartbreaking that it's clear that both of them want this relationship, but still, Blitz cannot open up and let people in. It's exactly what Veroska said in Blitz's um, Nightmare in Episode 6. Yet you still shove away anyone who gets too close until they resent you for being a selfish shit. <laughs> the episode culminates with Blitz alone in his apartment and um, flicking through photographs on his phone. And they go from new to old, guys. We see, like, just like the, the, the imp hanging out. Uh, we see uh, Moxie's first day. We see um, Luna's adoption day. We have memories of when Blitz and Veroska Mayday were were an item. And then we get some other pictures, guys. And at the time, I was completely confused. But now it is pretty much certain that this other clown character that is hanging out with Blitz is actually Fizzarali. Which does scream the question, guys. Where, does, where do the incredible imp twins fit into this whole scenario and obviously we then get that heartbreaking moment where we see the photograph of Blitz's family. Up until this point, I feel like us as, fa as fans have been a little bit confused about Tila. Because um, even up until last night, I assumed that Tila was just like a, a sister to Blitz and Barbie Wire. This is based on the fact that in the premi in the, um, in the pilot, of Hell of a Boss, the poster with them all on said the uh, imp siblings, and yet in the and in, in the first episode the poster was just Blitz and Barbie Wire, and it said imp twins, which completely confused me. Which I which I think that we're all confused now. I think that Tila is actually their mother. Um, why she would be on the poster with uh, for the with the imp siblings? Is a bit strange, but I'm pretty convinced that this character that we see here has to be Tila, guys. 
And yeah, she's got Blitz's choker on, which is very, very curious. I wonder if that is going to have some uh, future significance. But what we're here to talk about today is the potential relationship between Blitz and Barbie Wire and where Fizzarelli comes into that. Because I feel like it is one of two ways, guys. And I'm starting to feel like maybe Barbie Wire wasn't the one that broke up this, this, this party. I think it may have actually been Blitz. And I think that that is telling in the overarching moral of this episode about the difference between lust and love now obviously lust is uh is a interesting word guys it isn't necessarily kinky we're not talking about freaking angel dust at this point we're talking about the the, uh, the 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 lust for something the lust for possibly money the lust for power the lust for success and i feel that like that might actually be key to what actually happened between these two twins we knew up until this point that Blitz uh, worked at Lululand. Um, and we knew that he was in a double act. But one thing that we learnt in this episode is that that double act was actually with Fizzarelli, which completely threw, threw me off. I didn't expect that they would actually have actually worked together. But they appeared to work together after Barbie Wire and Blitz were trying to make a go of it. I should say that there is a theory that, and uh, this is not one which I subscribe to yet, very nice, that there is a theory that Fizzarelli may actually be Barbie Wire. I think that that is a stretch. It would certainly be a very big twist. Um, Fizzarelli was several, uh, several times referred to as he in uh, Hell of a Boss, but that necessarily doesn't, you know, that doesn't rule out, guys. I just don't think it is currently likely but i could be proven wrong i'm usually proven wrong on these things guys it's clear now that blitz fizzarelli and barbie wire all wanted to get into entertainment from a very young age obviously fizzarelli was the greatest at this and went on to become this hell famous character that can be seen all over the place with his uh, like robot mock-ups in, in robo fizzes and the most important point, part of episode 7 for me is the moment where he flicks from the pictures of him and Fizzarelli to the picture of him and his sister and what we now presume is his mother. So here's my little theory on that, Red Knights. I feel like Blitz had a fantastic relationship with Barbie Wire and Tila. But they weren't really going anywhere as an act. Maybe they were quite crass. Maybe they weren't very funny. I don't think they were very popular, guys. They were working at Lululand, but they were certainly not getting the recognition and the notice that uh, Fizzarelli was. I think at one point, Blitz saw the writing on the wall saying that this performance between the Imp twins was not going to be mainstream and wanted a way to try and get out of it to make himself you know more famous to, to to get that recognition to have the audience laugh at his jokes to be the successful performer and the only way he felt he could do that was to go into a double act with Fizzarelli instead of his sister this is where the whole lust thing comes into it guys uh he had love with Barbie Wire but he lusted the recognition and the fame that he could have got with going with Frizzarelli in his, as a double act instead. The only sad thing is, is that even though he did hitch his rocket to Frizzarelli, Frizzarelli's rocket just kept on going and ended up leaving Blitz in the dust where Frizzarelli simply didn't need a double act anymore. He was already this star on his own, leaving Blitz without the lust of being this success in 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 performing and the love of his family who he essentially betrayed to try and become the person that he wanted to be i feel like this is why blitz takes imp so seriously is that he wants to prove that he can be this success at the detriment of the people around him you could argue that the moment that uh, Blitz flicks that picture onto his family, it is a reaction of 
you know, missing them, wanting to see them again, but not being able to see them. We know that Barbie Wire is in rehab, for example. But for me, it is a reaction of regret. I feel like when he sees that picture, he remembers what he essentially did to his sister. Maybe leading her down this path of destruction because he went, attempted to go the other way with Fizzarali. And in the end, Fizzarali left him in the dust. It was lust, it wasn't love. And even if Barbie Wire and um, Blitz could never be as famous as Fizzarali, they still had that love, which is obviously a lot more important than having the lust of fame and fortune. And I feel like that's why Blitz cannot allow people close to him now, because he feels terrible about what he did uh, to his family. And he doesn't want it to happen to other people that he cares about. I feel like the dream in episode 6 is making a lot more sense now, guys. Now, this is a theory, of course, about the whole Barbie Wire thing. But up until now, I've expected Barbie Wire to come out and actually be a villain. But I've now gone a 180 on that, guys. Not 360, because that would mean I'd be going all the way around and facing the same way. I've gone a 180 on it now, guys. I feel like Blitz has huge remorse for what he did to Barbie Wire. And Barbie Wire couldn't take the fact that her her own twin turned her back on her to try and become a more than he was with Fizzarani. That's just my little theory, guys. That is what I take away from episode 7. I'm probably wrong. My theories are often wrong. But sometimes, every now and then, I hit that little bit of light and I get a couple of things right. Check out my v Danganronpa V3 series for that, guys. I predicted a lot of that, weirdly enough. But, guys, I love every single one of you. Like I say, the overarching arch of this story, and I feel like I've said this around 15 times, is the difference between lust and love. And that is where I feel like this episode... I feel like the, that's the message this episode was really trying to say. The fact that in the past, Blitz forsake, forsaked his love so he could be more than he actually currently was. That's just my opinion, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments. If I've missed anything else in the episode, please do let me know in the comments. I love every single one of you. What an amazing week it has been for the channel, guys. Seriously, you guys have been phenomenal. I love every single one of you. Please like and subscribe. All the good stuff. I'm Gamer, and I'll see you next time.